Europe's largest car maker Volkswagen is in a state of severe damage control as German prosecutors launch an investigation into the company's former boss Martin Winterkorn over the rigging of vehicle emissions tests. The probe will look at allegations of fraud in the sale of cars manipulated emissions data. This followed Martin Winterkorn's decision to quit last week after almost nine years at the helm of VW, saying he had no knowledge of the manipulations of results. Volkswagen has admitted to cheating diesel emissions tests in the United States in a scandal which it says may affect 11 million of their cars. The crisis is an embarrassment for Germany, which has for years held up Volkswagen as a model of the country's engineering prowess. The German car industry employs more than 750,000 people and is a major source of export income. And the country's deputy finance minister has been quoted as saying the scandal would have a big impact on the EU's biggest economy. Since news of the scandal broke, Volkswagen shares have plunged around 40 per cent, wiping more than $39 billion from its market value. Another $25 billion in penalties have been imposed by the US alone. And then there's the cost of potentially recalling and fixing 11 million cars. And to add insult to injury, the company is now the subject of online ridicule and, no surprises here, its own downfall parody. Mit dem Angriff Steiners wird das alles in Ordnung kommen. Steiner konnte nicht genügend Kräfte für einen Angriff massieren. Der Angriff Steiner ist nicht erfolgt. Es bleiben im Raum Keitel, Jodel, Krebs und Burgdorf. Der Angriff Steiners war ein Befehl! Verschickt sie! Das wird Magen wie mein Befehl zu ihr sein! Ich hätte gut daran getan, um darin alle höheren Offiziere registrieren zu lassen, wie Stalin! We're now going to cross to the man whose research triggered one of the world's biggest ever corporate scandals. Dan Carter is the interim director of West Virginia University Center for Alternative Fuels, Engines and Emissions. His small research team first released its findings on Volkswagen's true emissions from diesel cars around 18 months ago. But it's taken till now for Volkswagen to be held to account. Dan, welcome to Lateline. Thanks for having me. Can you explain to us the test you and your team were doing on Volkswagen cars that triggered this whole scandal? Yeah, basically, the, the, our team used uh, portable emissions measurement systems. Uh, these are miniaturized uh, emissions measure, measurement systems that were actually pioneered back in the early 2000s uh, to look at uh, heavy duty diesel emissions. And these, the, these equipment can be put on uh, the automobiles and, and driven around uh, you know, normal driving routes uh, just like the consumer would uh, navigate them. Why were you doing these tests in the first place? Uh, the International Council on Clean Transportation, ICCT, issued a request for proposals and that request was basically to study the emissions uh, production of, of small passenger car diesels in the United States market. Uh, we responded to that, to that RFP. Uh, our proposal was subsequently awarded and uh, that uh, then resulted in us uh, recruiting vehicles and, and uh, we recruited three, uh, tested those over real world routes. Um, and, and actually engaged our colleagues at the California Air Resources Board uh, basically to pull those vehicles into the, their uh, laboratory and, and test them according to the same certification tests that the vehicles would have originally been um, you know, performing against. Uh, and, and that move was basically to, to, to validate that, that the vehicles that we had selected you know, weren't, weren't improperly or, or misrepresenting the rest of those make and model cars. Um, you know, we, we didn't want to get a lemon, as you say. Did you randomly select these cars? Did Volkswagen get unlucky? Yeah, we, we randomly selected um, all the vehicles. I mean, at, if you look at light duty passenger car diesels in the US, there's not a, a huge uh, availability of vehicles. Uh, we looked at Mercedes, we looked at BMW, we looked at Volkswagen. We were more successful in Volkswagen. And the Volkswagens also did offer two different technologies. The Passat uses a selective catalytic reduction, whereas the Jetta uses a lean NOx trap. 
Um, and then we chose a BMW because it also had selective catalytic reduction um, to do a comparison. So yeah, it was, it was luck of the draw really that, that we chose those vehicles. What kind of discrepancies did these tests pick up and, and were you uh, surprised by the results as they came in? Yeah, we, we saw um, you know, uh, much larger NOx emissions or much higher NOx emissions in, in the real world than we saw that, that CARB was reporting in, uh, in the test cell and, and, and you know, the, the levels at which the, all these vehicles had been uh, asserted against. Um, you know, understand that, that these control devices are very effective when working and, and it was obviously a case you know we identified early that the, the duty cycle of those control devices their activity was lower than than it needed to be. Okay now Volkswagen apparently employed what we know, now know are called defeat devices can you explain what these are and how your tests got around them? Sure defeat devices typically refer to any kind of strategy that, that whereby you use to uh, identify that the vehicle is actually being tested in a in a chassis or in a, in a laboratory so on a chassis dynamometer so consider that a chassis dynamometer you know the vehicle is sitting still um, it's it's on a set of rolls those rolls are used to connect to motors flywheels uh, absorbers that would help simulate the load that the vehicle would see while driving over the road so when it's in this environment, you know, there are many things that, that one could, could use to identify that the vehicle is not being operated over the road. Uh, steering wheels aren't being moved. ABS sensors aren't working accordingly. GPS shows that it's, you know, sitting still. GPS might not even be functional because of, you know, a, a, a rooftop. Um, you know, there's many things that can be used. Anything basically that can be, uh, be used to detect that the vehicle is not operating, you know, un under normal conditions. And so when, you know, when, when we have the emissions equipment on the vehicle rather than connected to the stationary vehicle, you know, the vehicle believes it's just driving as normal. Now you presented this data at a conference around 18 months ago. Why has it taken so long for Vol Volkswagen to be held accountable for misleading consumers and regulators on such a grand scale? I mean, bear in mind that, that our data wasn't the actual data that, that was used to implicate anything or anyone. The, our data simply, you know, was, was an eye opener and, and, and that caused uh, our colleagues at the California Resources Board and the EPA to perform their own independent investigation. So, you know, agencies at, at that level, you know, w would have to perform their own tests then that data would have to be scrutinized and, and then there's due process. So you know, when, when you're making an announcement of that magnitude, obviously there's a system of checks and balances in place. Okay, do you think um, what you've uncovered is symptomatic of a wider problem in the industry? Could, could you be bombarded with all kinds of offers to do further tests on further vehicles? We would hope to be bombarded by all kinds of offers to do work because that's the way we stay around. Um, but I, this is the this is the first time that you're starting to see significant um, attention brought to differences be between uh, certification test results and in-use results for light duty. Uh, the heavy duty industry ha has you know gone through this. Uh, a period where that whereby they had to develop these in-use testing procedures, and it's part of their compliance. So I you know I. I I know that there's been announcements from the EPA and, and, and the Air Resources Board and full details have not been disclosed yet, but, but I, I believe there'll probably be more uh, you know, of this in-use type testing. Now when your test results first came in, did you have any idea about the significance of what you had uncovered and that this would lead to the massive corporate scandal that we've now seen unfold? Absolutely not. You know, we've we've seen um, off-cycle emissions like this before, and 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 you know others have reported similar things. And and you know, typically what happens is the the manufacturer gets notified. Uh, the manufacturer will do a voluntary recall. They'll do some revisions. Uh, they'll they'll work with the enforcement and, and and regulatory agencies and and explain you know where they found issues and and performance issues, uh, what the proposed fix is. They'll then apply that uh, revision or fix, and 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 then it goes on, you know, largely under the public's radar, um, and and things are the situations are corrected. Dan Carter, we'll have to leave it there. I'm sure you'll have a few more research projects coming your way. We thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for having us.